Hi everyone, uh, we warmly welcome you all to this joint webinar between WSO2 and Ericsson. We are going to discuss about the next generation IoT platform, Ericsson Innovation Cloud today, and how Ericsson has been used WSO2 technologies on their platform. My name is Godwin Namila, working as a senior lead solution engineer at WSO2. I would like to invite Simon uh, from Ericsson as the guest speaker for this webinar. Welcome Simon and thanks for joining. Thank you, Gavin, and thank you, WSO2, for hosting us in, in this webinar. So just as you said, my name is Simon Moritz. I'm an IoT ecosystem evangelist at Ericsson, the telecommunication, the global telecommunication company based in Stockholm, Sweden. I started off as a data scientist in 2007, worked at Ericsson Research with AI machine learning and stuff, 10, nine years, then jumped over to the business side where I've been since 2016. And now I have the pleasure to work with partners like WSO2. Uh, and we had a real challenge a few years back, and I'm going to show you that uh, by sharing something that we call the Ericsson Innovation uh, Cloud. And, and that is a solution um, that we have hosted and used in many, many different areas. We used it when we brought the first autonomous vehicles to Sweden and to the backyard of Ericsson. And we have used it in, in different brochures and um, stuff like this one. So this is a, a snapshot from the Mobile World Congress this year, where we utilized the Ericsson in Innovation Cloud to tell a story in how companies like e-scooter companies can leverage technologies from Ericsson like uh, SIM management. And in it, order to do so, we needed a platform. We created something called the Ericsson Innovation Cloud. And in that, we needed uh, someone to handle the identity or the triple A's, authentication, authorization, accounting. So we utilized an identity server, API management, and ESB, Enterprise Service Bus, from WSO2. Uh, and we have also then uh, used this in, in um, and our own booth. So we have a really uh, cool demo center in our headquarters called Imagine Possible Studio. So here on the stage, we have utilized uh, the Innovation Cloud for around 10 years, 7, 10 years. And in this, uh, again, utilizing then uh, WSO2. Um, <clears throat> so I thought I, I can show you a little bit on, on live uh, how this works uh, nicely then. <clears throat> so it all started off with a challenge from the Swedish government, and they created something called the Strategic Innovation Programs. And it's been different fields, everything from smart cities to mining, aviation, um, IoT, uh, infrastructure, and something called Dry Sweden for focus on people and mobility. And maybe one of the best that describes this solution is the Viable Cities uh, Strategic Innovation Programs. Together, there are many billions uh, sec investments in these uh, fields. And they wanted to say that, how do you actually harmonize and create uh, the different solutions? So they created what they called uh, the city as a platform from a smart city play. So if you see that kind of city, there are different sensors, there are different actuators, they need to be connected. It could be a garbage can, it could be a camera, um, and they all need to then be connected to be uh, smarter, of course. And that's, this we see globally in the digitalization journey. The challenge though, uh, when you do this, you need to do it more in a harmonized way. You need to figure out a way to, to connect the different dots from the different vendors and trying to link the different silos together. Otherwise they are sub-optimized, but if you truly want to do that in a smart way, you want to make it optimized. So they came to think of this as a, a phone, creating then an operation system like Android that can contact the data from data streams and storage and APIs to create an harmonized API-led connectivity. And when you do that, the standard or in a de facto standard way, you're not only isolating yourself in a construction site or a confined area or, or a city like this, but you can also make the different cities talk. And, and this is a really powerful then and can make the kind of true uh, digitalization happen. Putting this into practice, we can then go into the Dry Sweden community, which is a, a focus on mobility for people and goods. And, and they've had a number of partners. When we started this 2015-16, we were eight uh, funding partners. And now we are over 200 different uh, global companies 
So even if, if it's called Drive Sweden, there are many global companies. It's from insurance companies, there are fleet management, there are OEMs, technology providers like Ericsson and IBM and uh, different type of uh, actors then trying to get together. And cities from uh, Sweden like uh, Stockholm or Gothenburg, but even international cities like uh, the city of Beverly Hills, they, they came in and, and um, wanted to collaborate with us to figure out a good way to, to show, go and, and lead and tell the story of how a connected society may look like. So in this, uh, we then had, um, we worked in, in different fields. So we worked in projects and programs. Uh, sorry. Um, so in these programs, uh, then we created different projects and they had something called the policies and uh, rules. They have civil society engagement, business modeling, social planning, and then the technology that we call the digital infrastructure. Those are the thematic areas in which you can actually then apply for funding as well. Uh, if you become a partner of Drive Sweden, which is easy to do, just come in, join, click on the partner side and, and you get in. The digital infrastructure, Ericsson got the opportunity to work and drive together with the Swedish uh, traffic authority um, uh, and trying, and also Volvo cars here, trying then to set the scene. And we, back 2016, we saw uh, an emerging um, evolution of the, the, the generation of tele, uh, telecommunication, like from going from 4G to 5G. In the same time, we knew that it's going to happen more self-driving cars, self-driving buses, autonomous vehicles, ADVs, AMRs, those type of actors. But we also understood there is a, a gap that has to be filled in between. How do you actually link the different uh, things? So when you connect the stuff like we saw in this movie, they can be connected over cellular network. They can be even more improved by going to 5G, uh, lower latency, higher reliability, etc. Uh, but you need to support them and you need to connect the different areas. So then that's when we created what we call then the innovation cloud. The innovation cloud is a solution. It's a little bit like Swedish Spotify, but instead of having music artists here, we have then different um, actors. It could be different uh, um, genre, it could be different fields like we saw from the smart city play. It could be from from transportation or an area. So there can be different genres, if you may. <clears throat> so some, some of this, um, uh, we wanted to connect the different sensors like we saw in this movie and the videos, and also find the different blueprints and reference cases in which this uh, makes sense. But in order, before jumping into this uh, thing a bit more, I think I can show you that uh, in uh, a small video instead. So imagine then you are an industry player, maybe you are a city, maybe you are just a, a building a property tech owner, and you want to create a more smarter way for minimizing energy um, and uh, lower the power, so power uh, shaving, for instance. You may think that there is something out there, like there are apps for in, in, in Android Marketplace or App Store, same thing here, when we have the, this Spotify for data, you can then bring the different elements together. You can easily find that through this operation system and uh, address your innovation challenge that you may have. In this case, uh, the use case of energy optimization. So the idea is that you raise that problem, you go in and search and find the solutions. We can then have uh, onboarding of industrial partners or public authorities and operators, just like you saw in the dry Sweden area. You had the different elements, the five, thematic areas. So when you have that in place, then you're back and, and you can uh, do uh, smarter solutions in, in your um, uh, um, solution. Uh, one example of this is a partner that we worked with from Dry Sweden. We created a project called Connected Automated Track, where we worked with different partners um, in, in Innovation Cloud creating a traffic tower for the Swedish uh, startup and now scale-up company, Enride. So in Enride, that's like a truck, but without a driver compartment. So you can only drive that remotely if you have a reliable mobile communication like 5G or uh, autonomous self-driving using their cool technology. 
But when you do it remote, you do it from the operation center in this traffic tower, uh, having a reliability. And then you can set different policies and rules, geofencing, etc. So that's an example of how we actually came together to formalize that solution. Uh, Fadia mentioned, so we've utilized this solution then for, for instance, uh, Telia when they launched the five network in order to tell a story and how the society can be smarter, how you can have put trust in your geofencing, put trust in, in positioning eventually, and more and more stuff. And Android was one example. And another very good example where this comes to life is our partner Voy, which is a Swedish um, uh, e-scooter company, also Scala. And uh, obviously they are now adding a new transportation systems to the field. So before in Sweden, you had you know, public, uh, private cars, you had the taxis, you had the public transportation, and maybe some bikes. Now, when they added a few years back, the e-scooter to the scene, they complemented each other. And now you can actually start to create a more smarter way to, to have a, a mobility service, uh, mobility as a service in the society. But there is one thing missing. There is no interchange. There is no phone switch that can connect the different supply that is now available in the cities in Europe, for instance. So there is a need to fill that gap. And that is exactly that gap we want to uh, find and fill. But in order to do that, we needed to create a system that can actually onboard different actors from the travel demand partners, the bike rental companies, med maybe trying to figure out ways for weather forecasting and, and um, available parking, etc. So that's when we uh, had to, to utilize some identity server and we came to find that WSO2 is a very su uh, sufficient and good one. One good thing with uh, WSO2 in compared to their um, competitors is that we could also host the WSO2 identity server ourselves, so we can keep control of our sensitive GDPR data, like uh, people and organizations. So simply, we just uh, we can. I'll show you a little bit on how this onboarding goes. But before jumping into that, uh, I wanted to show um, a little bit on the what we added on top of WSO2 in order to get a uh, follow this kind of. Uh, thematic areas from Dry Sweden and also the project uh, partnership they have set up to do. So what we invented then from Innovation Cloud is a sort of hierarchy. So it's a little bit like you saw from uh, the first picture where we had a different strategic innovation programs. We saw them as different communities. Uh, in an ecosystem play, I, I try once to uh, figure out what is an ecosystem. And then uh, we had a visit from a school class uh, at Ericsson. So I came to ask the people, they were from seven years of age to 12 years of age. And one of the kids, I think he was around seven years of age. He said that an ecosystem is a little bit like um, uh, the circle of life. You have a zebra been eating by a lion that dies, becomes dust. And then, you know, you have become soil and then it grows with um, new grass that the zebra eats. And then the circle of life goes around. And another one complemented that story with water, water being all over the place. But animals and fish and stuff, they don't live in water H2O globally. They live in a local habitat, local ecosystem, like a lake or a river. Uh, but they share the same sort of um, ecosystem play. They share the same metadata, H2O. Same thing here. We try to learn from the nature, creating different, uh, uh, a global ecosystem with different local habitats, ecosystem uh, communities and even smaller habitats of use cases and projects that I show you with the micro mobility. And inside those, those we have then in a community like uh, Dry Sweden, there are a different um, use cases uh, like the case with connected automated track or the mobility as a service solution like Lima, and where an enterprise or an organization can bring different assets to the table. Some is bringing policies saying that Within this zone, you are allowed to park your e-scooters. Outside that zone, you're not allowed. That has to be uh, uh, shared. Other ones are sharing a challenge saying that I would need a solution to control my you know, autonomous vehicles in a smart way. There is no one. There is no connectivity for that. And that's when we need it to connect uh, the different dots supporting Android so that they can connect their hardware. Others could bring their software and eventually then share data and have it in a controlled way so that uh, you do it for users that uh, have the rights to do the right performance. 
So in order to do this, we needed the WSO2 identity server. We needed to do that for creating communities, um, dry Sweden, viable cities, etc. We needed that for creating the different projects like uh, Lima, Lindholm and Innovation Mobility Arena for mobility as a service solutions, or uh, the connected automated track for Enride. We needed to onboard the different area actors like uh, the traffic authority or Volvo cars or uh, um, uh, Voy and uh, Enride, etc. And we needed on an individual level knowing who you are and if you have the rights to get so. And in all this together, we can then connect the different blue elements, the, the things, uh, and, and create some sort of e-commerce platform, but a bit slower, and make sure that that information is shared between the right organizations in the right way. So I can then maybe show you a little bit on how that uh, may look like. So if you are a new uh, actor, like uh, a new partner that wants to join in to this uh, solution, we can create this uh, test company that uh, uploads their profiles, they utilize this stuff. When we have this form that we are using here, all this information is then stored into our uh, databases and the user identity information is stored then in WSO2 identity server and also having a unique um, identity for them. Eventually we'll be using tokens and stuff. So in this, then we have the users, we can then onboard different things. Uh, so those things can then uh, be added like this pet store example. So in this pet store example, we will then onboard information. Typically when you have different organizations, they have already described their different elements like in a Swagger documentation stuff. If they don't, we have a downloadable uh, Swagger template for you so that you can actually then utilize this. This information then goes to the WSO2 I, uh, API management solutions. And what we add into this is also then a possibility for the different actors then to trade and try to see their value in their data. Today, there are silos for technology reasons, uh, data don't share. Another big reason is that the different actors do not dare to share. Uh, because they are afraid that someone else will, you know, take their data and do something with it without them getting something in return. So we thought of how do we actually unlock that kind of uh, gridlock setup that there is within a smart city play or a transportation use case or etc. And that's when we said that, okay, let's, let's put the, uh, different elements to the table and let them discuss that price plan, a little bit like you do in an um, e-commerce platform. And you can upload your documents and then make sure that you, you do it in the right way. Also, when it comes to access control, so when it comes to uh, visibility or access control, we thought of this a little bit like the Linux environment for create, read, update, and delete the CRUD, uh, so that the different actors can share between themselves without um, sharing with the whole world. So again, we utilize this hierarchy and also the project, so you can say that I'm now only sharing within the dry Sweden community and within the project of connected automated track. And for that, you can actually then um, make sure that only the partners in that project will access the information. But once you are done and you're ready and you have combined and you tuned your, what you want to do, you can then open up that for the rest of the actors. As simple as you do it in a Linux environment when you change your setting and get the information. Then you're done, and then you can get uh, the, the things back. So on that, uh, now you have the information onboarded. We have registered you as a user, utilizing the different uh, uh, identity server. So you can be linked to a um, uh, token, and then using the tokens in the API management, and now I'm going to show you a little bit on how that works uh, more practically then. So once you have this organization set up, what can you do then next? So <clears throat> first of all, now we uh, onboard it. So then what you want to do is that you want to get um, a, a subscription. So you, you are now a consumer, an API, and would like to subscribe to the the different elements that there is in, in the marketplace. 
So you go and find again here in, in this example, the pet store use case, you subscribe that, you fill in your little bit like a travel request. So um, you can have, you tell your manager uh, that's saying that, look, I, I want this uh, pet store data for my project. And it may be bound by some costs. And, and then your partner manager that belongs to, in, in the hierarchy of in your organization will then approve. And you will set the reference number a little bit like you do on a travel request. In addition to that, also the, this um, producer that actually embedded this information to the innovation cloud would also have an approval process on how to do so. Uh, uh, and before jumping in then to the um, solution, I can actually then show you how this works uh, on the setup a little bit. So what we believe here is that we have then created um, some sort of phone switch, but now for data. A little bit like Ericsson did in the 1970s, where we had initially these copper cables and this lady there called Eve connecting to different places. Then we created an automatic switch, a system of many systems called AXE, and that became the basics for Ericsson. So you had a modular architecture and you can swap up elements. And what is needed is a little bit like the first industrial revolution. You need to come together and harmonize your APIs and data models, a little bit like the rail track was around for the first industrial revolutions, iconic steam engines. Now you have a digital infrastructure to support the AI and machine learning algorithms out there and the different data scientists. And they have a challenge of extract and transform and load. If you can do that smarter, uh, it's a great thing. And then connecting the physical environment like we saw in the movie to the digital environment by a, a super reliable communication channel. Preferably from Ericsson, we would like to believe that cellular communication is uh, of use here. When you have that, you can then take your sensors, the source, and, and go through this digital uh, rail track uh, all the way out to the actuator in a smart way. But you're not necessarily bound by the physical law here. Those elements uh, can also be then virtual environments and logical flow. And we bring those elements together, like connecting the different dots. Uh, and when you have done so, we have the different organizations and partners like the policy makers from the municipalities setting the different rules on how e-scooters are allowed to park. And that can be shared then through their MDS standard to the different OEMs producing different e-scooters or bikes, et cetera, that has to adhere to that law. So instead of you having this many-to-many -many relationship becomes very complex, you get this many-to-one, one-to-many, but still leverage the network e effect uh, and you can scale that uh, area. And what we also want to do and why we utilize the WSO2 and not the other competitors to WSO2 is that since we could then uh, uh, embed um, WSO2 into our environment, uh, we would then be um, able to host it not only in a centralized solution on the public clouds, but also decentralized in the federated network architecture. So talking about architecture, how was our architecture? Well. Uh, what we have initially was uh, we have our own environment with our own databases and API brokers. Then we had uh, WSO2 identity server, an API manager, and an enterprise service bus connecting to our BSS solution ESP, in this case, running on uh, virtual machines. But it's now to be also pushed into a Kubernetes uh, so we can have Docker containers for them as well. And, and this we can do in, in, in various different ways. Uh, when it comes to ESP, our building platform, um, what we want to do is then to make sure that the different actors get their view uh, stored. So you can then get your traffic together. You would understand this is how we actually utilize the information. So we, we wanted to count everything that counts because everything that counts counts, we believe. And doing that, uh, obviously, you as a user, you wanted to see how to go about what you have done and how you can consume that so that you ultimately would get uh, a ticket from your channel partner saying this is what, how much you have used from the different services, whether it's data or software or other stuff. And the other stuff, they are all then following this process of onboarding, as we just saw in the, the video for uh, the different uh, um, areas and then pushed into the 
marketplace, our e-commerce platform. And that could be anything from APIs, uh, data at rest, to data in, in motion, MQTT, MQV, and Kafka, or even software like apps to App Store. And when you're done that together, uh, we, we want to then sh show uh, how this uh, works. Um, so obviously we can <clears throat> then go to the marketplace and we can subscribe to the different information, the bikes information, or in this uh, case, I, I'm gonna show some information from uh, the weather information. Um, uh, that is uh, very interesting. So we have information then about um, precipitation weather warnings. And then here we utilize the barrier token from uh, WS2 API manager uh, that we have then stored linked to the assets uh, that, we, that someone then onboarded. When you get that token, you have uh, this information um, as a consumer, you can then go in and execute and test it like you can do in, in the Swagger information. So that's kind of common for many, but you have a one-stop shop here to, to get that information. This is interesting, but it's even more interesting if you can use that token and do something more. You can explore your information. So now we're onboarding more data exploration tools. We have a click, and now we, in this example, I'm gonna show you uh, an example of um, no put Jupyter. So anyone that likes to run Python can do that. And again, here we are hosting our Python scripts inside our environment so that instead of bringing data to the um, uh, code, you can bring code to data and create these data clean rooms uh, in a good way. And that's nice. And in, in this example, you can then show it in, 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 in a map. But it's even nicer when we can bring this to life by showing it on a map like uh, we want to show these uh, examples of the e-scooters. So now we are subscribing in our own map. Um, uh, it can be Mapbox or here, Maps, etc., uh, from the city scooters in Stockholm. Uh, and since we have now onboarded from different actors, we can then combine that with the information that we have from uh, telecommunication partners, like our customers from Ericsson. When you do that, that's when you have a very interesting thing. You can actually then start to measure the, the signal noise between the different base stations. So these base stations are not necessarily connected with fiber, but using over the air communication to communicate between each other. An example of that is what we have done with the Swedish um, weather company, SMHI. So we gave them the, the data. Uh, so when it's not uh, they, uh, signals between different base stations like this, and there is precipitation, it creates noise in those signals. That noise for us as humans can be, you know, not so, so valuable, but if you put it in the right context, you can actually do something fun with it. So what we did then with their help is that we share that in noise data with them and they created something called a micro weather. And today in Sweden, it's a bit good, uh, bad weather, so uh, good weather, so I, I'll go, take a historic data instead. In this, you can uh, then see the different uh, data and weather over time. Uh, and now you can see that over like um, uh, 500 by 500 meters. And then you can follow it over time and create some smartness uh, around this. Um, before this was available, the weather stations, they only had a few weather stations and the big weather stations are like uh, the Swedish TV tower and the different airports. Uh, now, all of a sudden, they get lots of more sensors in the space. So imagine what you can create new type of services and maybe new mobility solutions based on this information. But adding more stuff like geofence, you can then start to create these different rules saying that within this area, you're not allowed to you know, drive with uh, combustion engines or in certain times you have to be silent or you're only allowed to park on those places, et cetera. Uh, and, and of course you can then create more, adding more traffic information and then subscribe to that, et cetera, et cetera. So we have now an example of how to actually utilize that in a, in a good way. So uh, going back to the, uh, and trying to wrap up in the presentation, uh, we can then trying to connect the different stuff. So if you want to do this micro mobility uh, solution, then that could be really possible. We can bring those different elements to life. We can show it in different ways in an app or 
different views depending on how you can do that. But we, through WSO2, we have a one-stop shop now in a reliable way where you share information with each other as you like, but just like in, in a phone switch, in a phone uh, uh, telecommunication system, even if you all can utilize the mobile phone and make a phone call, you don't necessarily share your information, what you talk about with the whole of the world. And this you can do in so many different ways. Um, we can share some more tra information about how we did it with uh, virtual traffic lights, with geofencing, uh, with different um, network coverage informations. We've done it in Sweden, but we have also done it in Singapore with uh, taxi fleets, et cetera, et cetera, variable mass signs. So with that, I think I'm going to hand over uh, to uh, back to you, Godwin, uh, to do some final remarks. Thank you. Thanks for the insight, Simon, and, and it's great to see what you all have done. Um, to to complement what uh, Simon demonstrated, uh, Ericsson has completely used APIs of the identity server and the API manager to consume their capabilities to build this platform, right? Um, Based on your experience, uh, what advice would you give to other organizations uh, looking to leverage WSO2 technologies, Simon? I, mean, I find this very interesting and, and you have a lot of great power within WSO2. And I also find these kind of different uh, webinars that I've had from different customers and partners, uh, very good uh, and very informative. And you can get some idea and inspiration on how to use WSO2 APIs in a good way. Also now moving into the, your new solutions and your new connectors and, uh, and the connector store, et cetera. So uh, yeah, and I also think it's um, a good thing to have your partners that you have. I know that you have some great partners here in Sweden that you can actually work with uh, so that you, you can actually get some hands-on experience. And we got so, so much great support also from WSO2 in the different years. So, uh, thank you for, for that, and, and especially now also since we moved over to the Enterprise Edition. So a really good uh, partnership dialogue, I would say. Thank you so much. Pleasure to, pleasure to hear it from you, Simon. Thanks. Um, finally, I would like to understand uh, what is the strategic uh, uh, future direction of this platform and how Ericsson has planned to uh, go into that one. Yeah. So uh, thank you. So, so um, when it comes to Ericsson Innovation Cloud, we will not continue that within Ericsson alone this year, uh, but uh, uh, Drive Sweden and the community around is very excited to do more. So now we are embarking on a very exciting journey to see how we get actually going to do and uh, um, let this sort of um, system uh, uh, free a little bit more uh, so that others can also leverage it even more. So please stay tuned. You're going to hear more about that and follow us on LinkedIn and et cetera. And you can hear more on what we can do and how we can actually collaborate. If you do want to collaborate already today, uh, and if you are interested in mobility solutions, uh, please visit the drysweden.net uh, and go into the partner page where you can actually see, easily sign up uh, to become a partner. And then maybe join some projects, maybe get some funding if you are entitled to do that or just uh, join the different uh, great uh, dialogues and insights that comes from that. And then let's also utilize WSO2 when it's possible. Other Ericsson products are also now uh, barking on using WSO2 in a very exciting way. And we hope to connect the different actors utilizing WSO2 technology and their APIs in between them as well. Great, thank you. Well, uh, that's that's what we plan uh, for, the, for the session today. And, and thanks Thank for watching this uh, webinar and, and we hope this information is valuable for you. Thanks, Simon, again uh, for your time. And it, it's great pleasure to work with you and your team. And, and, and I would also like to thank Ericsson for their continued partnership and the trust in WSO2 Technologies. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, WSO2. Thank you, Godwin and the whole team.